Throughout history, there have been three major industrial revolutions, and we're in the middle of the fourth one right now. That fourth industrial revolution is called Industry 4.0, which is a buzzword you may have heard, but what exactly is Industry 4.0? I'm going to talk about that here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting, and we're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world with their digital transformation journeys. And in this fourth industrial revolution that we're in, or Industry 4.0, it helps to look back and understand what the first three industrial revolutions were so that we can better understand where we're headed with Industry 4.0. So it all starts with the first industrial revolution, which happened in the late 1700s. And this is where water and steam power fueled a lot of growth in agriculture and textiles back in the time. Then about 100 years later in the late 1800s, we had the second industrial revolution. And this revolution was driven by electrification and the advent of electricity, and more importantly, the advent of modern mass manufacturing. So production lines became more common and everything that was enabled by electricity and the economy that was enabled by electricity. And then finally, in the 1970s, is when the advent of the computer and supercomputer really fueled that third industrial revolution. So this is where supercomputers and enterprise resource planning and other sorts of technologies really started to digitize businesses and economies throughout the world, which leads us to Industry 4.0, which is an extension of the third industrial revolution, but certainly a big shakeup and a big change and pivot towards where we're headed in the future. And that's what I'll cover here today. The third industrial revolution really laid the foundation for Industry 4.0. And the computerization, digitization of businesses throughout the world really gave us the building blocks and the pieces that are leading us to Industry 4.0. And the key difference, though, with Industry 4.0 is focusing on connectivity and tying together all this technology and all this data that's been accumulating over years and decades. So one of the things that's being fueled by this connectivity are the end-to-end -end business processes that is the foundation for Industry 4.0. So internally, instead of having separate systems and silos and processes throughout the organization, Industry 4.0 is really focused on how we pull together all those business processes and all the data and the information and the workflows throughout the entire internal organization. But it's not just about internal operations that we're connecting. We're also connecting suppliers the suppliers and vendors that we work with, making sure that we capture data and integrate our business processes and workflows with them, and most importantly, integrating with our customers. So capturing data at the customer level in ways that we haven't been able to do in the past. And one of the keys to all of this integration, when we talk about the internal integration of business processes, as well as the integration to suppliers, and especially that integration to customers, is the whole technology of devices. So in other words, devices and sensors that are capturing data throughout the entire value chain from the customer order through the internal operations to the vendors as well. And some examples of devices and that sort of connectivity that's being created is on a manufacturing shop floor, for example. You have robotics and machines that are producing materials or producing finished goods, and there's sensors on those machines that are capturing data about what they're actually doing and the volume of production, the quality, it's also capturing data around potential predictive maintenance, things of that nature. You also have on the consumer or customer level, probably the most commonly understood device is something like an Apple Watch or a wearable device that's capturing data about me personally and you personally every day. And that's capturing a ton of data that's now connected to the modern enterprise. And that is a key part of Industry 4.0 is that whole connectivity of the entire value chain, technology and data behind it, as well as the devices that enable it. One of the key components of Industry 4.0 is artificial intelligence. So I mentioned before how the third industrial revolution led us to digitization and the capturing of data throughout organizations. And for decades now, organizations have been capturing data, but they haven't had good information and they haven't been able to make good use of that data for the most part until now. With Industry 4.0 though, we have emerging technologies like artificial intelligence that actually can make use of that data and give us some predictive analytics and some deeper understanding when it comes to customer behavior, for example, and really understanding and anticipating what our customer needs might be and what their purchasing decisions might look like and what their overall consumer behavior might look like. AI can also be used for things like predictive maintenance. So when you have machines on the shop floor, you have sensors on them that can predict when those machines might need to be 
maintained or repaired. And so it's a way to anticipate potential problems so you don't have to wait until they break, but you're also not investing too much money in maintaining or repairing things that don't necessarily need it yet. So AI is a key component of Industry 4.0 and in really making organizations smarter and making better use of the data that they already have and also introducing new data via some of the smart devices and sensors that we've talked about so far. In addition to connectivity, internet of things, artificial intelligence, some of the other things we've talked about, there's a number of other key components that are important to understand about Industry 4.0. First of all are the systems and devices, which we've briefly talked about, the enterprise technologies, the systems and devices on the shop floor, your suppliers, your customers, all connecting via sensors and devices, that's all an important part of Industry 4.0 and a prerequisite to realizing the benefits of Industry 4.0. In addition, you also need big data. You need to have the data that's used as an input into artificial intelligence and some of the other smart factory type of thinking and the smart factory type of functionality that we've talked about so far. So having that data captured in systems and more importantly, being able to use that data via artificial intelligence and other analytical tools is very important. Another intangible prerequisite to Industry 4.0 is operational and technological innovation. So in other words, you as an organization need to have a culture of innovation and a willingness to try new things and a willingness to think outside the box of the way things have always operated. So it's really looking at ways that you can use technology and operational improvements to really leverage the full potential of Industry 4.0. And finally, and most importantly, you need to have organizational change management. You need to manage the organization through the change because Industry 4.0 is not just about technology and process improvements and interconnectivity, internet of things and all that stuff I've talked about. More importantly, and more than anything, it's a cultural shift. It's a different way of operating as an organization. Your employees are going to be affected in pretty significant ways, more so than they've been affected by computers in the past. So it's important to have a very solid change management strategy in order to be successful in your Industry 4.0 initiatives. Now, I've talked a lot in this video so far about what some of the benefits are and the potential of Industry 4.0, but there's also a dark side, and that is the ethical implications of Industry 4.0. And some things to think about are, what does this mean to your workforce? If we're gonna displace workers because we're now automating their jobs or replacing them with machines and sensors and data that can do some of the work that they were doing, what does that mean to you as an organization? How are you gonna manage that change? And more importantly, is that the right thing to do? Is that an ethical thing to do? And I think that's something that every organization has to answer for themselves. And that's more of a societal question as well. Even if employees don't lose their jobs though, you also have the question of their purpose. If computers are doing a lot of the jobs that humans once did, and even if that doesn't necessarily mean I lose my job, does that undermine my sense of meaning and purpose within the organization? That's another ethical question or dilemma that needs to be answered. And then finally, it begs the question of government regulation. Is this the type of thing that should be regulated by government? Does there need to be additional safety nets? Does there need to be additional fallbacks for organizations and individuals that might be affected negatively by Industry 4.0? So we're still a ways out from that becoming a reality, but it is a very real risk that becomes more and more apparent over time as more organizations move to Industry 4.0. So I hope this has given you some things to think about as you think about your transition to Industry 4.0. And if you're going through any sort of digital or business transformation, I encourage you to check out some of the links I've included below, including a link to our digital transformation report, which provides best practices around how to manage transformation within your organization, including things like Industry 4.0. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day.